She was one of the most beautiful women I had ever seen. Her body was perfect in every line. Her face was clear and angelic, and her blue eyes were so cheerful, the most innocent you can imagine. And yet Irma Grease was the most depraved, cruel pervert with a rich imagination I have ever encountered. So recalled Irma Grease Gisela Pearl, a female doctor from Auschwitz-Birkenau. Blonde-haired, blue-eyed, the epitome of the Nazi Aryan poster child. But behind the guise of an angel, she concealed a demon. The prisoners called her the Blonde Devil, the Angel of Death, or the Beautiful Monster. There is an expression, whoso the wind will reap whirlwind, monsters are not born, they become. Irma Ilse Ida Grease was born on October 7, 1923, in the small village of Rechen, Mecklenburg district in northern Germany. Irma's father was farmer Alfred Anton Albert, who severely punished and abused his five children. Irma's mother committed suicide in 1932, when Grace was nine years old, presumably because of family problems. According to Irma's childhood memories, her father was a cruel man, uncompromising, and did not hear the pleas of his children and wife when he used violence against them. In 1933, the same year that Adolf Hitler and the Nazis came to power in Germany, 10-year-old Irma began the Nazi ideological treatment of the Nazi education program in all elementary schools. Irma left elementary school in 1938 at the age of 14 and, after leaving home, worked on a farm for six months. At the same time, she joined the Bund Deutscher Mädel League of German Girls. Thus begins her journey becoming a beast. Irma Grease's first encounter with sadism took place in Hohenlicken, a hospital for recovering SS fighters. She trained under Karl Gebhardt, later a war criminal, Europe's most famous orthopedic surgeon, whose specialty was the devastating treatment of Holocaust victims during experiments in the Ravensbrück and Hohenlicken death camps. Gempart used sulfonamide drugs to treat gangrenous wounds and bone grafts in an attempt to regenerate severed nerves, all done on concentration camp victims, and all these experiments were witnessed by Irma Grease. Irma tried to learn nursing in Hohenlicken, but most importantly, she received there a good ideology of SA members and learned the basics of the ideas of racial purity of the nation. She proved to be a good nurse and Gempart advised her to use her talents in the Ravensbrück women's concentration camp. In July 1942, she arrived at the Ravensbrück camp and joined the SS as a conscript SS officer in female guards in concentration camps. It usually took a month to train an SS officer in conscript to the full depraved potential of sadism over camp victims. Greece trained for it in three weeks. Irma earned 54 Reichsmarks a month working in the camp, considerably less than her colleagues earned. She wanted more. In March 1943, at the age of 19, Irma Grease is sent to the next camp in her brutal career, transferred to the bi slash women's camp at Birkenau Auschwitz near Krakow, where mass gassings and cremations of Jews and other third-rate victims took place. Here she is promoted to Obera Saharan, the second highest rank an SS Saharan could receive, and given command over 30,000 female prisoners at Camp Birkenau bi slash c Irma was always trying to look good, thanks to the loot she had stolen from the Birkenau killers, and she dressed with a sprinkling of clothes. She spent hours in front of the dressing mirror, styling her hair and imagining herself a movie star. One day she declared, After the war I'm going to be in the movies. You will see my name as a star on the screen. I know life and have seen a lot. Irma used her whip and gun to punish prisoners for the slightest violation of camp rules and liked to whip women's breasts, many ending up developing chest infections. Irma urged to operate on these women with an unsterilized knife. There was no anesthesia for these operations in the camp. The women cried out in agony during these excruciations. Gisela Pearl, the prison doctor who performed these operations, later recalled Grace's strange behavior during these operations. I happened to look up and saw the most horrible sight I had ever seen. Irma Grace was enjoying the sight of this human suffering. Her tense body swayed back and forth in a rhythmic motion. Her cheeks were flushed, and her wide open eyes held an expression of utter sexual sadism. She always came to see the operations of these women, whose breasts were opened and infested with the lice and filth that permeated the women's camp. Another prisoner testified that dogs were set on them when they violated camp rules. One time the dogs were tearing up the bodies of three girls who couldn't roll the cart up the hill. At this time, Irma came over to see what the dogs were doing to the children's bodies. The sight of blood seemed to intoxicate her, 
she gasped. She was sexually aroused. Everyone could see that. Irma Grace also had a reputation as a sexual pervert. She had lovers among the male and female population of Birkenau. She had an affair with the infamous Dr. Joseph Mengel, as well as with Joseph Kramer, commandant of Birkenau. It is said that she stood with Mengel during the selection of victims for experiments and was actively involved in deciding who would live and who would die. According to various recollections by survivors, Irma personally killed at least 30 people a day in various ways. Because of the approach of the front, Irma was transferred to Bergen-Belsen in March 1945, which was in an isolated location in northern Germany. There she forced prisoners to kneel for 12 hours a day. They were also often forced to stand for hours under snow, ice, and rain from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock a.m. Even though she only worked in the camp for three and a half weeks, she was so brutal that the inmates nicknamed her the Beast of Belson. On April 15, 1945, the British 11th Armored Division reached the camp, discovering ample evidence of unspeakable atrocities. Irma remained in the camp and was arrested by the British. Evidence of cannibalism was found in the camp. Prisoners told horror stories to the British that the kidneys, livers, and hearts of corpses were being eaten by the starving campers because there was no more food left. Irma Grease, the beautiful beast, tried her best to appear cold and aloof during the trial. She remained calm and unrepentant throughout the trial. Even when films and pictures of decomposing corpses taken after the liberation of Auschwitz and Belsen were shown, Grace remained impassive and did not seem at all worried. Irma Grace was hanged at 10.03 a.m. on December 13, 1945, in Hamelin Prison, Germany. Standing on the scaffold, she threw it in the executioner's face. Hurry up. At one of the trials of the Nazis involved in the brutal killings at Auschwitz, one of the victims burst into tears right in the courtroom. She was taken out of the courtroom, reassured and asked why she was crying. Was she perhaps hurt and anguished by all she had endured? And then the woman answered, No, I am crying because I see myself in my executioner. I am the one who humiliated, beat, killed. I could have been in his place. Who knows how each of us would have behaved if we had grown up in an atmosphere of horrible fascist propaganda, if we had been taught from childhood the fanatical ideas that our nation was the best and only nation on the planet, and that all other nations were beasts not worthy to live. If we had seen all the horrors of war and heinous crimes, who knows if we would not have become brutalized ourselves, who knows? What would you like to see on our channel next? Tell us in the comments.